March 25, 2024, News Report 1. On March 25, 2024, the Philippines National Security Advisor, Arnold, stated that a Chinese Coast Guard ship fired water cannons at a Filipino supply ship near the Renei Reef on March 23, causing three Filipino soldiers to be injured and the Filipino supply ship to be severely damaged. The Philippines Department of Foreign Affairs summoned the acting charged affair of the Chinese Embassy in the Philippines on March 25 and instructed the Philippine Embassy in China to formally lodge a complaint with the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Philippine Defense Secretary Teodoro stated on March 25 that China should assert its maritime rights through international arbitration. If China is not afraid to show its claims to the world, then why not resort to arbitration under international law? China will only use force to compel the Philippines to submit to its ambitions. U.S. State Department spokesperson Miller stated on March 23 that the United States stands with ally the Philippines, demanding that China abide by the rulings of international courts and cease its dangerous and destabilizing actions. The United States also reiterated that any armed attack against Filipino military vessels, aircraft, including Philippine Coast Guard ships, would fall under the U.S.-Philippines Mutual Defense Treaty. Japan's former ambassador to the Philippines, Endo Kawako, tweeted that Japan is deeply concerned about the dangerous actions of the Chinese Coast Guard and stands united with Japan, the Philippines, and the United States. Sun Yun, director of the Stimson Center, stated that since August last year, the game between China and the Philippines over the Madre Trace Reef has escalated continuously and has become one of the three most uncertain risks in U.S.-China relations this year. The other two potential risks are the inauguration speech of the Democratic Progressive Party-elected President Lai ching Tee and the U.S. presidential election in November this year. Sun Yun said that although most industry insiders believe that the situation in Madre Trace Reef will develop towards a long-term low-intensity gray zone, considering the current frequency and intensity of the game between China and the Philippines, any confrontation and friction could lead to a rapid escalation of the crisis, especially considering the U.S. support for the Philippines, emphasizing that armed attacks against the Philippines would trigger the U.S.-Philippines Mutual Defense Treaty. The escalation between the U.S. and China in the South China Sea over Madre Trace Reef should be given full attention and consideration. In addition, the Chinese think tank South China Sea Strategic Situation Awareness released a report on March 22, stating that since 2023, the U.S. military's activities in the South China Sea no longer rely on electronic reconnaissance aircraft but have fully shifted to drones, and drones can operate at night. This means that the confrontation between China and the U.S. in the South China Sea has expanded to all weather conditions. The complexity and difficulty of crisis management for both sides will be greatly increased. The report found that last year, the U.S. Navy Carrier Strike Group entered the South China Sea area six times, the same as in 2022, but the duration of activities has significantly increased. For example, the deployment time of the Nimitz Carrier Strike Group in the South China Sea in January to February 2023 was as long as 37 days, while in 2022, the average deployment time of U.S. Carrier Strike Groups in the South China Sea was only 10 to 20 days. This indicates that the U.S. military presence in the South China Sea has significantly strengthened. News Report 2 a terrorist attack occurred at the Moscow Music Hall on the evening of March 22, resulting in 137 deaths, including three children, and more than 180 injuries. For hours after the incident, the terrorist organization Islamic State, IS, claimed responsibility for the terrorist attack on Telegram and claimed that the gunman had safely evacuated the base. To prove that they were responsible for the attack, IS released photos of the gunman and a video filmed from the gunman's perspective. The video shows the gunman entering the music hall and opening fire, with many people shot on the ground. One of the terrorists also used a knife to cut the necks of the injured. The video also showed that the Russian special police force was only five minutes away from the music hall, as captured by a drone. However, 
the special police force did not arrive at the scene until an hour and a half after the terrorist attack. U.S. National Security Council spokesperson Watson stated on March 23 that IS is fully responsible for the terrorist attack, and Ukraine was not involved. Despite IS admitting responsibility, Russia has blamed Ukraine. Russian President Putin stated in a national television address on March 23 that all four gunmen had been arrested and were fleeing to Ukraine. Putin did not provide evidence to support his claim but emphasized that the four terrorists had been detained and were being interrogated. The Bauman District Court in Moscow announced on March 24 that the four suspects were charged with terrorism and face life imprisonment. Three of the suspects have admitted to all charges. However, Russian media reported that all four suspects are Tajik citizens living in Russia. Ukrainian President Zelensky said in a speech on March 23 that Putin was trying to blame others, and when the incident occurred, Putin did not address Russian citizens for a full 24 hours, remaining silent. British Chancellor Hunter stated that Putin is creating a smokescreen to justify the invasion of Ukraine. French-Russia expert Libyev said that the Russian government has always seen the West and the United States as its number one enemies, and blaming the Islamic State for this terrorist attack will blur Russia's traditional narrative, making it difficult to exploit. News Report 3 The Financial Times reported that the United States and Japan are planning to enhance the functionality of the U.S. military command in Japan to ensure smooth cooperation with Japan's Joint Chiefs of Staff. The Joint Chiefs of Staff is a permanent organization that commands the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force, the Maritime Self-Defense Force, and the Air Self-Defense Force. The Japanese Joint Chiefs of Staff, which is set to be launched at the end of this year, will command the Army, Navy, and Air Force. The United States has begun adjusting its military command in Japan to better cooperate with Japan's Joint Chiefs of Staff. This is the largest change since the signing of the U.S.-Japan Security Treaty in 1960. Currently, the U.S. Military Command in Japan has limited authority, mainly responsible for overseeing and training joint U.S.-Japan exercises and drills. The U.S. Indo-Pacific Command controls all military forces in Japan, including the 7th Fleet and the U.S. Marine Corps stationed in Okinawa. However, Due to the time difference between the Indo-Pacific Command in Hawaii and Tokyo, there are difficulties in command. According to the Financial Times, the United States is concerned about China's military presence in East Asia, leading to adjustments in the U.S. military in Japan, mainly in the military command framework with Japan. The command authority remains with the Indo-Pacific Command, but the authority of the U.S. forces in Japan will be expanded, possibly deploying officers directly to Japan's Joint Chiefs of Staff to coordinate shared resources and respond to issues related to Taiwan. U.S. President Biden and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida will announce this adjustment plan at the White House on April 10. Additionally, the Nikkei reported that the Japan Ground Self-Defense Force held the third anniversary ceremony of its amphibious rapid deployment brigade in Nagasaki Prefecture on March 24. The amphibious rapid deployment brigade is a unit specifically responsible for island defense, with a mission similar to that of Japan's Marine Corps. The Nikkei also noted that Japan has established a ground-to-ship missile unit in the southwest region to strengthen its defense deployment towards Taiwan. With these adjustments, Japan has largely completed its island deployment and is now beginning to deploy forces to support island defense on the mainland, demonstrating rapid action in response to issues related to Taiwan. News Report 4 According to Bloomberg, the U.S. Central Command tweeted that the Houthi militia launched missiles at the Chinese cruise ship Huangpu on March 26, causing a fire on the ship. Fortunately, the fire was extinguished within half an hour, and there are currently no reports of casualties. Houthi political leader Buhaidi told a Russian newspaper on January 19 that Chinese and Russian ships could safely pass through the strait. It was reported that Chinese and Russian diplomats in Oman held talks with Houthi political leader Salam. The Houthis promised that Chinese and Russian ships would not be targeted in the Strait and the Gulf of Aden. However, 
The attack on the Chinese cruise ship suggests that these promises were meaningless. The U.S. Central Command stated that after the Huangpu cruise ship issued a distress signal, the U.S. military shot down six drones over the southern Red Sea, with five crashing into the sea and one escaping. This incident highlights the importance of ensuring the safe navigation of ships in the region under tense circumstances. News Report 5 According to Bloomberg News, the Huruan Research Institute released the Huruan Rich List on March 25. Zhuang Shanshan, chairman of Nongfu Spring, became China's richest person with a wealth of 450 billion renminbi, marking his fourth consecutive year as China's richest person. However, Zhuang Shanshan's wealth decreased by 9% last year, dropping six places globally to rank 21st. The second-ranked person is Huang Zheng, the founder of Pinduoduo, with a wealth of 385 billion renminbi, an increase of 71% from last year, making him the fastest-growing entrepreneur in wealth this year, ranking 24th globally, up 15 places. Pony Ma of Tencent ranks third with a wealth of 250 billion renminbi, a 10% decrease, ranking 36th globally, down 5 places. Other notable figures on the list include Zhang Yiming of ByteDance, Ding Lei of NetEase, the He family of Media Group, Li Kaxing, Li Xiaoji, Zheng Yuchuan, chairman of Contemporary Amperex Technology, Li Shufu, chairman of Geely, etc. The list shows that there are 814 entrepreneurs in China with wealth exceeding $1 billion, a decrease of 155 from last year, but still ranking first in the world. The total wealth of these entrepreneurs is 19 trillion renminbi, a 15% decrease from last year. There are 24 billionaires in China with wealth exceeding $100 billion, a decrease of 9 from last year. Among the listed Chinese wealth, 702 people's wealth decreased from last year, 208 fell off the list, 240 people's wealth increased, and 80 people's wealth remained unchanged. News Report 6 According to Agence France Presse, Israeli Defense Minister Gantz departed for the United States on March 24, where he will meet with U.S. Secretary of Defense Austin, Secretary of State Blinken, and National Security Advisor Sullivan. Gantz said he will focus on two aspects, maintaining Israel's military superiority in obtaining weapons and equipment, and achieving the common goals of the United States and Israel, namely, defeating Hamas and bringing hostages home. Earlier, U.S. Secretary of State Blinken visited Israel on March 22 and held talks with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. Blinken warned that if the Israeli military launches a ground attack on Gaza, Israel will face the risk of global isolation. Netanyahu said that even without U.S. support, Israel will launch a ground attack on Gaza. The growing divergence between the U.S. and Israel is due to differences in the Biden administration's policy direction and Israel's domestic and foreign policy. Some believe that the Biden administration is more focused on human rights and international public opinion in dealing with Middle East issues, while Israel is more concerned about its security and confronting organizations like Hamas. News Report 7 According to Voice of America, former Chinese National Defense University political commissar Liu Yazhou was sentenced to life imprisonment for corruption and using foundations to amass wealth at the end of last year. Sources revealed that Liu Yazhou privately criticized the central leadership after retiring and expressed his views on solving the Taiwan issue, which angered Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping said at an internal meeting that Liu Yazhou had political ambitions. There has been no official announcement since Liu Yazhou's arrest and sentencing, which may indicate Xi Jinping's dissatisfaction with him. The report pointed out that Xi Jinping appears to no longer trust some people and has a zero-tolerance attitude towards political dissent. The report also mentioned the Second Red Generation, but pointed out that the Second Red Generation is not a unified group, and even if some of them lose trust in Xi Jinping, others may still support him. Therefore, although Liu Yazhou's case implies tension between Xi Jinping and some members of the Second Red Generation, it cannot be inferred that the entire Second Red Generation has lost trust in Xi Jinping. News Report 8 
According to China News Service, an accident occurred at the Nanjing International New Energy Vehicle Exhibition. A electric vehicle named Geek on the booth suddenly started and crashed into a BYD exhibition car on the other side of the booth, causing five people to be knocked down and injured, two of them seriously needing further observation. The five people have lost vital signs and may have died. Geek is an electric vehicle brand owned by Geely. The video shows that after the gray Geek collided with the BYD exhibition car, the tail lights of the Geek lit up, indicating that someone was in the driver's seat. A staff member and a boy were knocked down. The vehicles on the booth should be in a power-off state and should not start. Geek responded that the accident was due to mismanagement of the booth vehicle, and the vehicle did not start in the designated display mode, but was in parking mode. However, this explanation is not believed by many. This accident is similar to an incident in June 2023 at a shopping mall in Xiamen, Fujian, where an exhibited vehicle was accidentally started by a boy and collided with the mall's escalator. News Report 9 Recently, Italian ambassador to China Ambrosi, in an interview with South China Morning Post, said that the Chinese government has invited Italian President Mattarella and Prime Minister Draghi to visit China this year. This year marks the 20th anniversary of the comprehensive strategic partnership between China and Italy. Italy's withdrawal from the Belt and Road Initiative has no impact on the bilateral relationship, and they hope to further cooperate. In addition, U.S. Treasury Secretary Yellen will visit China in April with the goal of having candid and substantive discussions on contentious issues. However, there are reports indicating that the purpose of high-ranking U.S. officials' visits to China may be merely symbolic, to demonstrate to global investors the U.S.'s ability to manage U.S.-China relations, with fewer substantive issues on the agenda. In addition, former Taiwan President Ma ying will lead a group of Taiwanese youth to visit China for route-seeking exchanges, visiting cities including Guangdong, Shaanxi, and Beijing. This visit also includes participating in the ceremony of the Huangdi's False Age Qingming Ceremony.